Hi, this is Ivarian X from the Candid Frame. Well, today I thought I'd take a look at pictures that have used Photoshop or some light application in, in a particular way to, to evoke uh, a certain feel or look to the images. Uh, most of the photographs that I see in the Flickr pool are fairly straightforward. They, they obviously have the benefit of Photoshop because you see some conversion over to black and white, you see some color enhancements, but I really wanted to just pay particular attention to those photographers who are using Photoshop in a real creative way. When, when we first embrace Photoshop, there are so many tools and filters and applications that we can, uh, we can apply to the images that it's easy to take it a little bit too far. And uh, th there are no shortage of images that are out there where the Photoshopping really calls attention to itself and really overwhelms what, what's happening with the photographs. And sometimes the photographs are just not particularly good photographs, um, but they're enhanced in a way in an effort to make them interesting. So, you know, I'm not talking about those kind of images, images today. I'm really trying to look at photographs where I find them interesting and that the, the, the manipulation of the image, the enhancement of the image in, in Photoshop um, helps to bring out that particular photographer's vision. Uh, we'll start off with um, Peter Amador's uh, photograph of, uh, of a boxer here. Uh, it was shot with a D90 or the 18 millimeter uh, lens, which uh, translates to about a 24 uh, millimeter. He's using uh, SB600 in a gridded beauty dish um, as, a, as a light source. So in and of itself, this is a really good shot. It's uh, along the lines of a photojournalism uh, documentary shot. And the lighting, uh, the use of the wide angle to move in really tight uh, makes for a really dramatic uh, photograph. But he sort of treats it uh, with a little bit of what looks like to be some cross-processing. And, and it gives a certain value to, to, to the color, like the skin tones, the reds, the greens, and really pull it out from it being a very sort of natural rendering of the scene. But I think it really kind of adds, adds to it. But, you know, the bones of the photograph here are really, really strong. Whether it's a, a straight color shot, whether it's a black and white, or, with, or an image with this special kind of treatment, the, the spine of the of the photograph is really good. I like the composition. I like the moment. I like the expression. The body language, all is very great. So Peter here uses Photoshop and, and this shift in color in order to produce an image that has just a slightly different feel than it would be if it were just a straight, straight shot. Does this make it a better shot? Well, that's really hard to say, but, but it's in line with some of other some of the other images that Peter has uploaded uh, from what it looks like to be a, a series of Im images of this boxer. So as a body of work, it, it makes sense. Uh, if, if this were the only shot that he did uh, in this way from a series and the rest of them were, say, black and white or just, just straight out of the camera color, then it would be like really odd as to why is he interpreting this singular image in this, in this way. But uh, as a series of uh, photographs, it really works really well, and it doesn't call attention to itself. I think it's it's sort of a nuanced way of being able to manip manipulate color and to make the image that much more interesting. But again, you take a look at the shot, and it's a great moment. It's a great composition. So he's not trying to put lipstick on a pig in this shot. He's got a wonderful uh, photograph to begin with. Now, here is Johannes Reinhardt, and he... Titles this Monkey Man. And let's see what he shot this with. Uh, does it have into any info? No, I'm not seeing anything here, but it says here Adam uh, Evil Hate Monkey Kendall after the brief show at the Perth Fringe Festival. So I, I take it that this guy is uh, a performer and not just your everyday Australian. Um, so. The shot here is really over the top. I mean, obviously, this person is 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 a performer or is a person who really wants a lot of attention. But uh, the expression, the costuming, uh, the body language, all of it is very, very uh, dramatic. So, it, Johannes here has taken 
the, the shot and done some things in terms of the rendering of the color, not only of the background, but of the subject itself, and is really taking it away from any sort of reality. But it's it complements what this character and what the scene and what this moment is. Uh, the fact that the skin tones, particularly around the face, aren't, you know, uh, perfectly accurate, uh, it, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, it seems to add to the sort of comic bookish feel to to the image. Um, you know, we're always trying to get things accurate. We're always trying to get the most perfect white balance, the most perfect exposure. And sometimes you can, when you get the images in Photoshop or Lightroom, you're able to take images elsewhere. But I think what's really important is to have a, a vision, to have a clear idea of not only what you can do to the photograph, but why you, you want to do it. And it's clear in this photograph and in the previous photograph that both photographers had a clear idea of where they wanted to go with the photograph. Um, th there's no doubt that there's some experimentation involved in all this. Um, you always have to sort of play around to see what these, what these software applications can do for us. But almost inevitably, you find something, uh, a particular technique, a particular look, and then you go, man, I really want to be able to do something with that. You may be able to do it with one of the images that you already have, but sometimes you may go out and actually produce photographs with the specific intention of creating, of being able to enhance it using one of the surprises and discoveries you made by, by just playing around in Photoshop. Here's a shot by Jan Armour. Um, beautiful, beautiful shot. Uh, initially shot with a Nikon D300 with a 90 millimeter lens um, of what says here from a series of photographs of women on the uneven parallel bars using slow shutter speeds and lots of luck. Texture overlay by Les Goodman. So here, here's a great example of what is would have been just a straight shot of a gymnast. Um, straight out of the camera, the picture probably looks nothing like this. But the, the process of making it look different definitely happened in camera by Jan's choice to use slow shutter speed to convey a sense of motion uh, and, and energy and, and momentum. Uh, most people think of using shutter priority, for example, just to freeze the, the motion. And, and here, uh, she makes a different choice to actively get an unsharp photograph, to get that blur, because that moment of this person on, on, on the parallel bar, the drama of it, is, is not necessarily going to be captured with a perfectly sharp frozen image. And she uses that image, not as her you know, beginning and ending point, but as a launch point of being able to do even more with it in in Photoshop and by applying this texture and doing you know the various uh, things that she does in the in, in the image we don't have the benefit of knowing exactly what that process was but we take a look at these photographs and it and this photograph and it really is a beautiful photograph it conveys that that sense of drama of energy of, of the beauty of the human body and the colors, the sort of distressed look of the frame um, make for a really strong photograph. I mean, immediately when I saw it, it just, you know, really stuck out, uh, stuck out for me and made me want to linger at it. It was fairly obvious what it was, but, you know, this was what a re very different take from, you know, a lot of the images that you see of this particular sport where it's often shot with a 300 millimeter lens or longer at a telephoto you know, that telephoto distant look with all that compression, and you see the, 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 the physicality and the energy that the athlete is putting into performing that particular act. But here, this is more of an interpretation. This is an artistic interpretation of what it means to, to practice this sport. And it's, a, and it's a beautiful, beautiful example of how, you know, you can take a, a visual element that begins in the camera and then just build from it later in, in Photoshop. Uh, here is an image of, by Ferret or no, or Nulu. Oh God, I'm, I wish I wasn't so bad with names, but ah uh, well, that's the way it goes. Um, shot with a Nikon 8, D808, 24 to 70, uh, at around 24 uh, millimeter. And um, it's it's a, a night scene with some beautiful beautiful skies and it's it's again it's a it's a normal scene uh, at night at twilight um, and you have these wonderful colors in the sky you have these 
a light being produced near the house and then you have the light in the in the foreground here illuminating the leaves that more than likely came from uh, a burst of a flash or some other light source here and and these colors are certainly not natural this is not the way the human eye would see the scene this is ferret's interpretation of it and he's doing some things like increasing the color saturation uh, tweaking the the contrast doing some selective editing here to enhance certain certain color values but even though this isn't the real world uh, i kind of like this it feels it feels uh, kind of like fairy taleish for for lack of a better word it feels like it's a place you know, in, in the midst of a fairy tale as a result of using that exaggerated color. I see a lot of exaggerated color and contrast in a lot of landscape images, and sometimes that takes me out of the photographs because it's so obvious that it's it's not the real world. And, and, you know, for some of those images, it just doesn't work for me. Uh, and it may be just a matter of taste. But in this particular scene, he is using some part of the natural world, but the presence of the house and the artificial lights in the background and the telephone lines make it feel like a um, sort of a cinematic moment where these things are being exaggerated in order to evoke a sense of maybe foreboding isn't, isn't the correct word, but there's something a little maybe ominous about it. There's a feeling that I get from this image and th that, that makes me feel that the the treatment of the image is really there to serve the emotion and the emotionality, the, that emotional impact of the photograph. Uh, he may have just been doing this for aesthetic reasons, but there's a feeling that comes from this image that wouldn't come uh, from the shot straight out of the camera. And uh, I, I like that. And I like that. I like that. I know most people are going to respond to this image just based on the color, but there's something going on beyond just the, the visual aesthetics of the image that make it really interesting for me. And then lastly, we have Robert Cornelius, who's been doing this wonderful series of portraits and self-portraits. Um, and he, he's a, a photographer who's really sort of taking what you can do in Photoshop and really taking it to the level of photo, photo illustration. For him, the, the photographs are certainly our, our starting point. They're just the foundation of what he wants to do. He has a real clear vision for each of his photographs and he uses the tool of Photoshop um, to great effect. And I think that's really, really fantastic. Um, there's a lot of work that's involved in making an image like this. And while it's obvious that the image was created to some extent using Photoshop, uh, I'm not so much focusing on the technique as I am looking at the photograph. I mean, you have this beautiful subject, these beautiful colors, and then you have this effect as if she's being shattered by something, the back of her head is exploding into this shard of shards of color and light, and it's just really striking. It, yes, it's very sort of painterly and photographic at the very same time, uh, but like so many of the photographs that I gravitate to, whether they're done straight out of the camera or whether or not whether they're done uh, through the process of Photoshop, it's it's the vision that the individual photographer has. The, the idea, the theme that they're creating the images like. You know, I'm, I, I'm not at all against people experimenting with Photoshop and playing around and, and doing stuff. But sometimes, you know, the process of Photoshop is, seems to be the ultimate goal is saying, how can I make something really look kind of cool and, look at, and make it look different? As if simply making it look different is justification enough for doing it. And I think that these photographers really demonstrate that you know, it, it takes more than just that to make a really good image. And um, not a whole lot of images this week, but I think they, these are really wonderful examples of what's possible. So whether you're, you know, you're new to Photoshop or whether you're advanced in Photoshop, you know, there's, there's always a lot of stuff to learn. But if my experience is any, uh, most of the tools that you use in Photoshop, most of the tools that are in Photoshop, you're never going to use. Uh, what's really sort of key is finding those sets of tools and and, and, and that process that utilizes sort of a, a small core set of them to help serve your particular vision. Because I know when I use in photo, when I do in uh, work in Photoshop, uh, I'm not using probably 85% of what's available to me there. But that's okay because that 15% is really what I need in order to be able to make a shot. 
and uh, in, the, in the near future I may um, use one of these videos to kind of walk you through my process for for an image or two. But uh, that's it here. Um, hope you liked it. If you uh, if you're liking what you're seeing here, please subscribe. And if you haven't been submitting images to the Flickr pool, uh, please do. There have been a lot of people who have been uh, adding themselves uh, to the uh, to the group here, and I encourage you guys to to upload any variety of, of images up there. Um, in the coming months, I'll have some um, some themes that I may suggest people shoot for. Um, but right now, I like the fact that I'm just kind of picking stuff up at random and letting that sort of inspire how I'm uh, how and what I'm going to talk about. But uh, if you haven't listened to the Candid Frame, please do. We've got some great interviews, and you can find us at the Candid Frame. Dot com and again please subscribe to this channel if you're liking it and help spread the word so i'll see you next time take care